SpeedyB are well known for having an app that allows you to configure your flight controller based on beta flight in the field. This app does work on a wired connection, but it also works wirelessly as well with their own flight stacks or with the SpeedyB Adapter 3. They've now, though, released a new adapter that allows you to add that wireless functionality to pretty much any flight controller on the market that's got a Spear UART. This new Bluetooth adapter is designed to allow you to be able to wirelessly configure your flight controller without built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in the field, and what we're going to do today is take a bit of a closer look at it. Now, just to be clear, SpeedyB did send me this new UART adapter for free, however, they have not seen this video before it's been published, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. What we're going to do in this video is take a closer look at what this new device is, walk you through some of its features and capabilities, and then at the end, as always, I will share with you my thoughts. Okay, now just to explain what this is. It is a dedicated wireless device for your flight controller. SpeedyB are well known for making software that allows you to adjust the parameters on beta flight. For instance, you've got the SpeedyB app, but they also have flight controllers with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in as well. The idea of this is it's an adapter to plug into your existing flight controller that doesn't have that functionality and allow you to then be able to do it with the SpeedyB app. They do also have other options available, such as the SpeedyB adapter, which connects by USB. But the big difference, really, between these two is that this you have to plug in via USB. This is designed to attach to a Spear UART, be permanently mounted, giving you that wireless connectivity all of the time. It also has a couple of nice little interesting features, including the fact that it will detect when your flight controller is actually armed over MSP and then disable the onboard wireless system to prevent it interfering with your quad. But you can also set it to an IO switch as well if you wanted to, being able to manually control it as well. Okay, diving in a bit closer. So as you can see, it really does look a lot like an Express LRS receiver. We have the chipset, we have the little antenna, which is those PCB antenna, and then on the back, we have our pads with some other functions too. Now, size-wise, SpeedyB is saying that this is 11mm by 14mm by 0.8. There isn't a weight on it, but it's going to be about a gram or less, and it really is very similar in shape and size to many of the Express LRS receivers out there, especially the ones with that PCB type antenna. Now it comes pre-wired with the power connections as well as our UART connections as well and there's also a spear pad on the back too and they do include an extra wire in it allowing you to hook it up to a dedicated switch on the flight controller on a dedicated port if you wanted to to be able to control the wireless function manually. OK, now just to give you a bit of a closer look at what this device actually looks like under the microscope, you can see we've got an ESP32, we've got our little C3 chip antenna, we've got a diode, we've got our LED, and we've got our voltage regulator, which looks like a 3AUG, which will be the typical 3.3 volt regulator that you find on many Express LRS style wireless Bluetooth devices. Now on the back of the board, if I flip it over, there really isn't a huge amount to see here. You can see we've got the labeling, we've got the pinout on the back as well. So ground, five volt TX RX, and then we've got the Bluetooth switch pad down the bottom here as well, which can be used for manually switching it on and off in the configuration if you want to do that via beta flight but it does have that automatic switching available if you want to use that instead and in my test so far it works very well now just to show you the connection quickly it is on the flight controller it's on a spear uart which is uart one this was a very quick and dirty connection but it really is very simple it's just like any receiver you get today you've got your power which needs to be five volts you've got your ground you've then got your tx and rx and you would simply cross tx to rx rx to tx exactly the same as an express lrs receiver Okay, now to demo this, I've currently got it connected to a basic F405 flight controller. This one has no wireless functionality at all. We're connected onto UR1. Now, to get this working in beta flight, all you need to do is make sure that you have MSP turned on on the relevant UART. To do this, you simply go into ports, then find the UART that you've connected it to. In my case, it's UART1, and make sure this first toggle in the first column is turned on for your relevant UART, and then simply save and reboot, and it then is ready to work. OK, so we've now finished the configuration in beta flight. All we had to do was turn on that MSP on the correct UART. So what we're going to do is power this on. No USB is now connected. We're going to let this 
power up and you can see the little LEDs are flashing. We've got a solid white and a red. And what I'm going to do on the SpeedyB app, because we're going to use this to configure it, we need to find it on the list of devices. So if you click down here, you're going to look under BLE. And what we're looking for is SpeedyB BT Nano version 3, which is listed there. We're going to click on that and you can now see that it has found it. We can then click connect and that will now connect to our flight controller via the Bluetooth adapter. You can now see that the LED has changed from white to green. And if I move the flight controller around, you can see that being demonstrated on the screen. And we have all of that usual functionality here that you have via the SpeedyB app, whether it be a flight controller with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi built in, or whether it be with the SpeedyB adapter, or now with this little Bluetooth adapter. Now, obviously, as this is a Bluetooth transmitter, it's going to be transmitting on that 2.4 gigahertz, and there would be the possibility of it interfering with your normal radio system, such as Express LRS here. This is why they have built in that functionality that it will actually disable the RF from this when you arm your aircraft. Just to demonstrate this, if I move the flight controller around, we're currently disarmed. You can see that it is connected to the SpeedyB app, but if I flick the arming switch on the radio, the second I do that, you can see it's now disconnected. It says Bluetooth connection lost, and there's no RF coming out of this device at all, which means it should no longer have any possibility of interfering with anything on your aircraft, including your 2.4 gigs RF radio system. Okay, now just to demonstrate that it will turn off the RF power when we arm the aircraft. What we currently have is the 2.4 gig spectrum being shown on my Spectrum V6 spectrum analyzer. These are signals that are local to me. I can't stop these showing up. They are what is actually visible in the area that I'm in. What I'm going to do though is drop down the reference level to hopefully bring them to a much lower level than what we're going to get from this unit. I'm going to power up the flight controller with the adapter connected and now you can see that Bluetooth communication showing there. For instance, if I go over to the spectrum view, you can see it there, but it's easier to show this on the histogram view and you can see it there. Now, currently, Express LRS isn't connected. I've turned it off to be able to show you this in real time myself, rather than the two signals at the same time. But what I'm going to have to do now is turn on my Express LRS transmitter, then the receiver will come back, and then I'll show you what happens when you arm it. This probably isn't going to be that easy to see. I'm going to try and put some separation in, but it's still going to be difficult, but hopefully we will be able to see it shut down. Okay, so I've now got Express LRS connected you can see those carriers are those lower level carriers all across the band down here and these higher peaks that you're seeing are the Bluetooth connection from this adapter because that is right next to the input on the analyzer so it's connected on my phone what I'm going to do now is trigger arming again we've got the message come up on the screen that's telling me that the throttle is armed do I want to disconnect it has the countdown which counts down from 10 and boom it's disconnected and you can now see that those Bluetooth signals have gone, showing that there's no output once arming has taken place. Okay, so as you've seen, it's a nice little Bluetooth adapter that allows you to add that wireless configuration functionality to pretty much any flight controller that has a spare UART. The configuration in Betaflight is really simple. You just need to enable that MSP in the configuration. And then when you're armed, it will disable the output and allow you to fly without having to worry about it interfering with your wireless system. Now, this adapter is going to cost about $9. I believe it's $8.99. And you're going to be able to get two of them for $15 available directly from SpeedyB as well. I think it's a nice little option if you want to be able to add that wireless configuration options to your flight controller. It's really going to take up no major space, certainly no weight either. And as I've already said, it's about the same shape and size as an Express LRS receiver. Now, if you're interested in getting one, I will put a link to it in the description. I want to say a thank you to SpeedyB for sending me this one over. Quite interesting to see how these things have developed. And it just makes life a little bit easier if you do want to be able to have that wireless configuration on a quad. And it's going to be compatible with anything right down to a tiny whoop all the way up to a five inch or more. Now that's it from me on this one. If you found this video useful, please do consider checking out the links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to make this content without their support. And if you'd like to support us in the future as well, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.